Hey guys, this is Nate with the Tackle Time Podcast. Today we have Kyle Schrader coming on with us, big time bass angler, uh, big tournament fisher too. So we talk a little bit about that, uh, talk about some kayaks, um, get into some particular matches with gear and rods and you know all that stuff. Uh, so it's pretty cool. You're going to like this. So we're going to jump into that here. Uh, question for you if you're listening though, have you checked out Tackle Boss? Have you needed new gear? Of course you did at some point. You're going to need new gear. You probably have by now. You need new worms. Did you lose all your shit when your kayak tipped over? So I hope not because that blows. But if you need new gear, check out TackleBuys.com. We have thousands of sale listings from across the web hosted to save you money, save you time, and get you the gear you want at a better price. So check out TackleBuys, and we're going to go ahead and jump into this episode. Guys, tonight... We got Kyle Schrader on with us here from, uh, I guess you're in Middle Texas or Middle yeah, uh, Central Texas, yeah. Okay, yep. So in Central Texas, he's going to talk to us about that beautiful Guadalupe bass that he caught the other day. So mm -hmm. we'll uh, we'll have to grab a picture of that and put it in the show notes and talk about all kind of cool stuff. We got some tackle to talk about tonight. So uh, yep. Kyle, say hello, my man. How's it going, guys? Now I always try and start. Do you have one particular fishing memory that you think you'll never forget? Oh, hmm. I mean, beyond, beyond getting the treble hook in my thumb, <laughs> besides that. <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, we can go into that one or we can do a I different like, one. I'm sure that one. Like, I heard like a mother, but uh, I think I just caught my PB out of that lake. It's a, called a, like a Trading House Creek Reservoir. It's a kind of like an X uh, power plant. Like they, they had demoed the, plan a few years ago but it's still i mean a couple there's been a couple of teeners caught out of it's here in central texas like a 2200 acre lake uh like a 13 wow. on the dot got caught two years ago there's been a couple tens here and there but the quality's significantly decreased the last couple of years it may i even say like the 13 got caught two years ago but it's just gone downhill we've had consecutive years of very very low water levels they, they and even whatever, whatever rain we do get it doesn't, uh, it's not creek fed or anything. So the only, only water it gets in is by rainfall. So, but even when it does fill up, uh, they just may have opened the gates and let it all out. So very low water levels have kept that up, uh, kind of like the vegetation. It's usually like hydrilla pond. I mean, you used to go out across the main lake, just be like a couple hundred yards, like pond weed flats and, mm. uh, Lake Fort guy and, uh, uh, Lunker is actually at their video. It's titled, uh, what is called a su surprise double digit catch was was filmed out on trading house creek reservoir they they ran straight across the from the ramp to the on wheat point to catch it on a top or like i think like a buzz bait or something like that but that was like five minutes from the house so i'm like man this, that late that launch looks familiar because there's wow. a i think they did that back in 2017 i, I do believe there's an old uh there's an old pontoon boat uh, marooned out on a marooned out on one of those main points and like they they're just driving right by like damn that pontoon boat looks familiar uh, but you know, like uh, after that we we tried to you know we, like oh they caught a 10 in that spot there should be some more but i, I think my best out of there is like a seven a seven six two or whatever but that was a pretty uh, that was my pb for about two years and then i, I caught my new pb about two weeks ago like an eight four out on uh, houston county lake Wow. Wow. That's awesome. Good for you, man. Yeah. That was during our, uh, our class, our class, our two day classic event, just about two weekends ago. I caught him at like six twenty five in the morning. Couldn't see Jack. <laughs> wow. So I'm, I'm assuming you're a pretty avid bass fisherman from, from what you're saying. Oh yeah. Uh, I've only been doing, uh, the tournament trails like the last, eh, like three years. I did 2018, 2019. And this year was just kind of all over the place with, I went about three months without even doing any tournaments most of most of our live stuff was canceled down here oh, okay so uh i was doing some like kbf trail events when, when the last year they still had like four or five events down here in texas but this year they had none that well they had one on ray hubbard that got canceled but they they uh, renamed it was like the texas uh texas region but now it, it got changed to the central region so everything's like out of state this gotcha. year but then like, uh, and I'll, I'll be heading to Gunnersville in about two weeks for that, uh, the KBF in that national championship for them. I think there's like 350 guys. So, uh, signed up for that one. Should be good. 
Now, do or do you fish out of a kayak or do you have yeah, a boat? Uh, I can't remember. Uh, I fish out of a kayak. Uh, just a Hobie uh, Pro Angler 12. Just awesome. Pedal, pedal drive. So how how do you like that? I know a lot of people have looked at the Hobies and said, oh, oh a lot of hype worth, or worth every penny. Really? I have not picked up a paddle in like three years. <laughs> no, that's that's <laughs> that where I'm at right now in in my fishing journeys. I'm 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 going to upgrade to a pedal drive after you know paddling for what seems like far too long so yeah now for like sh like shallow river and like a lot like lots of rocks lots of like grassy flats that kind of thing i, I can totally see paddle still gets the edge or mm -hmm. wider and a lot more maneuverable but especially when you're doing a lot of offshore fishing going into the wind or cross wind big waves that kind of thing it just uh, whenever I was still paddling, I'd just, I was like, okay, I got like two and a half miles to the spot into headwind. And I was, by the time I'd get to the spot, I'd be just shoulder yeah. be hurting. Just, you know, they just kind of just make it less, it just makes it less enjoyable. But now like river fishing, whatever, I mean, you're going with the current most of the time. So it's not a big deal. And if you need to drag it, no big deal. Most of them are pretty lightweight. Now those Hobies, I wouldn't take them. If you're doing a lot of dragging, I, I definitely wouldn't take it. But with the new uh, 360 drive they came out with, they, uh, they're actually able to handle the, well, 360 drive and it's got like the kick up fin. So even if you, <clears> that was, a, there's, a, there's a lot of memes on it where you, uh, uh, like you, you, yeah, it touches, a, barely touches a stump and it shows the mast at like a 90 degree angle there. But uh, the kick up fins basically take that. That was like the biggest gripe for, it's been, been that way for years, but like they, they updated that this year, but. Uh, I think that is, uh, with the kick-up fins in the 360, it, it knocked the price up another grand. So I was like, Whoa. yeah. But then there's, I mean, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll probably upgrade to it at some point. But I've been with my current one for about three years. It's like a 2017 model. But it's been good. I mean, it's just, just great to be able to just like, I mean, like, like when I was on inks, I mean, I covered uh, probably like six, six and a half, seven miles, and I was perfectly fine i mean a wind picked up big waves i mean no big deal just it just handles it like a tank now being able to kick as opposed to, to paddle like you said to kind of by the time you get to the spot you're trying to fish you're halfway worn out and then you still have to use your arms the rest of the day so it kind of oh, yeah. it it doesn't it's it, they don't complement each other but being able to to paddle backwards or forward whichever way you're trying to go and then still try to pull a fish in and grab a net and do everything else it's, it, it can oh, be yeah. a lot especially with a paddle for sure and like uh especially like say you're working a bank line where you, you're getting a wind and i know on the paddle if, if like if you don't have a rudder you're screwed if you have any kind of wind as soon as you <laughs> as soon as you take that paddle all the water you start swinging around yep, yep. <laughs> that that's my fight with mine that was make that does always make me so frustrated but like with the the hobo you get a Get a rudder, you get a rudder and a and a skeg. Like the skeg's a just fixed position. It basically just helps you maintain whatever course rudder it helps you adjust. But mm -hmm. like you want to you want to work bank line. You need to make this certain cast. Drop the skeg and just tweak barely tweak the rudder here and there. But you can just cast reel, cast reel. It's just you can just get out so much more cast in a day. But no, yeah, I think. I think a kayak is a highly underrated tool for a lot of people who, who are, you know, stuck on the bank and, you know, and, and obviously I hope it's a big investment, but there's a lot of other great pedal or if you're going to pedal drive or whatever. Well, yeah, there's um, a lot, there's a lot of great bands. Uh, I mean, uh, Pelican came out with, uh, I think it's called the, the high drive or something like that. They're using the Hobie's uh, uh, generation one Mirage drive, which. Oh, okay. But uh, it was like that. It's it's like one of those things. Like the patent uh, patent expired on the mm. original drive, so Pelican was using it. But they had some issues with like their uh, the rudder assembly. Some of the rivets weren't waterproof, and like kayaks filling full of water. And I, I personally know one of my friends who got that. He had that issue. Oh wow! Drive, drive messed up. That kind of thing. Because those, those generation one drives, if you mess those up, you have to take the entire thing apart to fix it. Oh. Versus like the the basically like the in the mirage to like the 180 drives i'm no not sure in the 360 drive i'm sure that actually probably got more complicated but the 180 wow. drive is super simple you want to take a mast out it's just take a uh you do all you do is take one little uh o-ring off knock a pin out and just untighten it and you got the mast off with the the, the v1 drive you have to 
have all like all these different sets of tools, take it apart, line it up this way. Oh, okay. it's just, but like on the water, it's a nightmare. But I can, yeah, that would suck. I would hate to have to they, do that up there. They've made pretty big improvements on that. Like and now, and like with the 180, you can go reverse, and with the 360, you can go. It's pretty much op- operates like a trolling motor, like uh, as the arrow pointing straight, and you can mm-hmm. you can actually control like it can actually spin all the way around. So uh, you can uh, make, especially like a a lot of the river. A lot of the river guys, uh, they said it just makes it so much easier to fish current uh, and, and or offshore stuff. Because uh, even when I'm offshore, like I say, wind changes or whatever, I have to, it's it's kind of hard to actually turn around on a dime. I, I, yeah. have, to have, yeah. a, I have my little um, anchor, I have my little anchor pole. I just, I, I just, I kind of like just barely just sweep it on the side just to adjust a little bit. With a 360, you can just do it with your feet, but they said the learning curve is not too bad. But it's certainly an investment. I mean, like, there's plenty. There's Native. There's Jackson. There's Feel Free. There's Bonafide. Uh, Bonafide. I'm not 100 percent sure if they have a pedal. Yeah, drive. not yet. Not for. I love. I'd love one because that's probably what I would have if they did. But new, uh, new canoe. I'm not sure. I've seen a bunch of people do the new canoe, like the bow mount trolling mm-hmm. motor. And I mean, because even, even if you go from beyond pedal, they got so much. Like, they got like the torpedoes but oh yeah uh, yep. torpedoes they got you can put bow mounts on about everything now like people like one of my buddies uh has like a spot lock on his and then the the old town uh, sportsman or autopilot has spot yeah. lock built yep. into it so that's that's pretty that's pretty yeah dumb. you're you're up in the hobie range at that point but you know as far as you, if you're looking at apples to apples they're they're pricey too for sure oh, yeah. they're neat they're, yeah. they're incredible Oh yeah, I mean it's just uh, I mean you could probably pick anything, and uh, I just like I just like Hobie because like everything's like pre-installed. I little I don't have to drill anything. Like it's already got the ports for the electronics. It's already got the it's already got the scupper hole for the your tra- even like mm-hmm. your large size transducers. They've made a system where the thing will actually if you bump into anything on the bottom, it'll actually retract up in here, so it'll protect oh, your okay. transducers. So just everything everything's just built in and laid out just. Well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say. I mean, nothing's perfect, but I haven't had no issues with it. But no, that's it's. Those, da- those damn things are heavy, though. <laughs> no, that's, a, that's you, you need some way to move them for sure. Yeah, um, so. that's, I, got, I put on like those that uh, that Boondocks landing gear. I put that on like mm-hmm. two years ago, back in 2018, and no issue. It makes it so much easier. I was using the Sea Tug cart for a long time. Yeah, on, yeah. On dirt and. Like dirt and kind of regular ground, it's fine. If you're doing steep concrete ramps, it sucks hard. And like you gotta, you gotta figure some system way because you'll line it up, you'll get under, uh, you'll get underneath it, and as soon as you go to like to go to the front, it'll start rolling away on you. I'm like, oh, okay. And so you're waiting on and like uh, some ramps, some places it's so steep you can't use anything but the ramp. And then if it's a crowded lake, or you got bass boats trying to back down, yeah, you're yeah. just taking time. So. I can literally just rock and roll up to the ramp, drop the wheels down, pull my drive up, pull my rudder and skeg up, pop out, and just drag it up the ramp and be out. Oh, nice. Okay. Yes, yeah, so it, it speeds up the process quite a bit. I mean, it's 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 heavy, but uh, if, as soon as you throw any wheels on anything, it's manageable. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I I've been digging pretty hard, and I I've really liked the natives as far as the pedal drive. So I think that. Oh, might they're good. Yeah. Where uh, I think uh, Greg. Uh, Blanchard, yeah, that's uh, that's the brand he uses. I think he's in a. I can't I remember if he's in a, I can't remember if he's in a Titan or a Slayer right now. I can't remember. Last I saw, he was in a Titan, but that might have changed since you know as of recent. But no, yeah, there's some there's some good info online. I mean, for anybody who's interested in any of the kayaks, there's a treasure trove of so many good videos online of these people using them and demonstrating them and, and yeah. comparing yeah. them. I think so, when I when I was first getting it, it was like a Greg Blanchard, uh, another guy like a, where I was watching comparison videos because I was looking at the at the time back in 2017. It was like at, I don't think the Titan was out. It was I think it was the, the Slayer 12, the Slayer 14. Uh, then like I think Beyond the Bounds Outdoors, whatever his name is, he he still makes a video. He does more bass uh, like bass boat tournaments now, mm-hmm. but he did comparison videos like the Hobie PA 12 versus the Native Watercraft Slayer 12. Sure. Yep before you buy or whatever i mean it's i think it's got like a one point whatever million views whatever it's a pretty big video but it was i mean it was probably the best fishing investment i ever made i mean i have used the absolute piss out of that thing the last three that's years awesome. that's awesome yeah 
how how often if 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 you have any luck how often are you want to be trying to go because it seems like you're pretty committed are you going multiple times a week uh i try to like uh during the basically the only time i'm only going this time of year right now depending on weather i, I usually probably only get out maybe maybe twice a week right now uh, since i moved here out here in temple a lot, a lot of my smaller waters i can just like load up and go to aren't really as accessible i got lake belt and still house but they fish very tough during the summertime, so it's almost not even worth going. Because, so, like, the last probably three, four trips have been pretty abysmal out there. But then any, any other lake that's worthwhile is, like, a pretty long haul during the week. So, and now, yeah. now it's, starting to, it's starting to get dark about, what, 7.45, 8 o'clock now. Sure. Yep. So, and I, I don't get out of work till 5, 5.30. So, this is starting to wind down where I, I just don't have any time in the afternoon to go no more. No, I get it. I'm in the same boat you are, and there's not a lot of great spots exactly where I'm at, at least, you know, to go just to, to hop right over to after work. So, no, that, that's the, the kayaks, I think, are something people should really look into if they want to enjoy their fishing uh, a whole lot more than bank fishing on its own. So, oh, yeah. Um, one channel, if anybody's listening, definitely worth checking out is Headwaters Kayak. They do tons and tons of comparisons and all kinds of good stuff. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you can see countless videos online of people comparing kayaks but yeah before we sit here talking about kayaks all night i know you yeah. had a couple pieces of gear that you wanted to, to show us oh. about and teach us how to use so I'm, i definitely want to dig into that with you yeah, sure uh i'll go over like a swim jigs first since that's i think that's what i got laid out already sure awesome all right so like uh, this time of year it's mostly a mostly a shad deal unless you can find some like uh, active bluegill beds or a lake there's not much shad in but it's mostly either straight whites little chartreuse in the whites or you get like a green pumpkin something color and that's about all you need you get really dirty water black and blues but i think uh probably the main one i use this time of year around shallow vegetation is like this like quarter ounce it's, it's kind of beat up already because it's been just chewed to pieces but hmm. Uh, it's like a quarter ounce, uh, six cents uh, swim jig, and I think that's a just a just a rage menace, uh, white rage menace on the back. But got it. Uh, I like quarter. Uh, anytime like I'm fishing, like eh, about about four feet and less, I like using the quarter ounce. But uh, three eighths, almost I'm almost having to like rip it out of the stuff too much. I can't I can't float it as well. Which uh, spring probably my favorite has been my favorite time. Like uh, especially when those like bigger uh, bigger females push like push up in that shallow cover and you kind of float it right over their head and that really pisses them off <laughs> but and uh, even if they don't eat it you'll they'll, they'll still come up they'll still they'll come up and look at it or swipe at it or whatever then switch to a wacky rig which is just my primary things is cover water with a swim jig and find catch some fish find them and just switch up to wacky rig and just try and uh, target where those uh, bass are sitting on those beds but um the kind of gear I use for it is like a. It's, it it depends on what uh what kind of cover you're fishing as well. I know people use like straight fifty pound braid. If you like, if you're in, if you're more out in like East Texas where it's a little bit more like tannic or kind of dirty stained water, you can get away with it. Uh, like a lot more brush and like sure. super duper thick hydrilla out that way, you can get away with it. But up here in Temple, it's a lot of there is a lot of like clean clean water fisheries. Uh, Kind of hard to find a, lakes with a good population of uh, of aquatic vegetation out here, but if, if you can, it, it works pretty well. But uh, I throw it on like a seven four heavy action. I, I, it's not a very expensive. It's like a lose Mach two com, uh, a rod, or it's just like a seven four heavy. But sure, I, throw, sure. I throw it on a reels a loose Super Duty with a twenty pound uh, Invisix. I I mean the it's got, I mean, the, the 20 pound stuff's uh, stout enough and got a heavy action rod. To, it helps, uh, that, and that long rod helps uh, load it, load that fluorocarbon up. But I've always had more luck on, on fluoro rather than braid for whatever reason. But uh, but the biggest thing I do is, just, uh, especially around that spawn time, I mean, I don't just straight like burn it back in, but I'll, it's usually, it's usually like a lot of like point casting, like a, a like if you're out on the lake and you see oh there's the big main point whatever but then like uh if you go to like a little there's a line of a line of grass on a grass mm. mat or grass bed you, there's like little points little little cuts in whatever like uh, i'll focus on those i won't like 
get on the mat and throw right, throw down the entire length of the mat. I'll just mostly focus on those little points and cuts in, which they'll – and if they're up to feed, they'll they'll be positioned up on that stuff. So they'll be a little bit easier to catch. But I'll just – I'll make a long cast or uh, – if I'm out in some open water, I'll make a long cast. If I'm in close in, I'll just make a little pitch about maybe 10, 15 feet past it and just me immediately start, re- uh, especially in that springtime uh, and that quarter ounce. I don't. I usually don't let it maybe sit maybe six inches to a foot under the water. So I'll just immediately start reeling up, keep that – I'll keep that rod tip kind of like at a – no, it's probably like a one, one or two o'clock or whatever. I'll, I'll, I'll keep it about halfway raised. I mean, you don't want to keep it like way up here. Sure, yeah. you, you get someone to bite, then they'll like – they'll run and whatever, and then you're just – you ain't got nothing to – you ain't got nothing to jack them on. But just reeling and like whenever I get around one of those uh, little points or whatever, I'll, I'll, kind, of, I'll kind of just like – just, uh, I'll just do like a fast twitch, or uh, or you can do that, or you can or you can pop the rod. Either or makes the same action. I like popping the rod a little more because you don't because if you fast reel, you actually bring it like way you bring the bait way past where you pop the rod. All you're doing is throwing slack in it, but and usually uh, whenever you give it that pop and it'll it'll kind of flutter and the, the skirt will flare out and everything like yeah, that. Yeah, yep. That's usually when you get the at least uh, for me that's when I get most of my bites. So I you're doing- wanna, yeah. I, I was know. gonna just yeah. to clarify. You said yeah. you like to throw it essentially right around those weed beds or weed lines, but kind of where you have those overlapping lines that they kind of come together. Oh, yeah. and you uh, might you might get the angles all come in one in one place. Especially like a and it's like a but it's more more or less a square bill with one big <laughs> one big old hook on it. But uh, uh, I mean I'm uh, like on the Sam Rayburn. I've caught fish like uh, at that time of year we went in. I think this is back in. February where they're just pushing up a little bit not quite there but we had got a ton of rain so there's a lot of flood way flooded back in the tree stuff like the bass boats couldn't get in so yeah I mean I had actually pulled my drive up and like scoot under some lay down gotcha. and then as soon as you got in there that fish hadn't been touched all day so they were I mean uh, just that just cast around just is- isolated stumps just floated around you see them just kind of swoop up and grab it some would miss it, but then you just change it up to a little more finessey approach and usually get them again. But it can work in, I mean, uh, at the springtime, I do carry, I do, I use, uh, I think all three colors more that time of year just because uh, weather's a lot more volatile. So you get changing conditions. Um, if I can find a green pumpkin jig or. Uh, do, 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 do. There's one. And then this color is great, especially around like a, any kind of any kind of spawn, post spawn or whatever. Just a, just a kind of like just natural bluegill color. And same gotcha. thing, I use Rage Menace pro, like especially on the quarter ounce, I use it like ninety percent of the time. Since I uh, since I can float it a lot more, if you're using like a big paddle tail, there's a lot more resistance you're trying to have to pop out, and that that tail kind of does a weird. It's kind of hard to make it float because it kind of just you get a lot more drag on it, but. I gotcha. always like just using like the rage menace, and then they tend to they tend to just get the whole thing rather than just like taking the back of the swim bait. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And they like, yeah, probably throw, a lot less plastic. Oh yeah, and I, I, I mean I've thrown. I don't have anything on this, but like a, this black and blue. I mean, just your typical dirty water stuff. I've thrown that in there. I mean, you can throw like whatever whatever cross style bait or creature bait, anything you want on there. I've, I mean, I've thrown like just st- like straight tail worms, uh, like cutter tail worms. I mean, whatever whatever you're confident in, you can pretty much throw on them. As as long as you got a, like a little bit of kick on, it. if it's uh, if it's like a hundred percent like dead action, like z- like Zippo, you you yeah, you kind of tend to you kind of those, those baits don't really float as well. They kind of just tend to just like sink like a rock because they ain't got no sure, they ain't got sure. drag on them, but um like black and blue same thing i mean yeah i mean i've caught fish in like two inches of visibility on a black and blue swim jig i mean they can st- as long as you put it put it within within their reach they'll still come out and get it gotcha no that's cool so you had the swim bait you wanted to talk about and then you also had uh, another piece you said right oh yeah uh, wacky rigs my other my other favorite <laughs> nice <laughs> nice yeah. so wacky rigs uh pretty simple just like a instead of like a, a standard like texas rig worm mm-hmm. or whatever like i mean me uh 
mother of all bass fishing when you're learning growing up here here throwing a texas rig worm drag it around it's yeah it's, yep. it's weedless the kids won't get it hung up all the time whatever but uh wacky rig just gives it a little bit different look and uh it kind of helps it stay in place it, uh, it kind of just hovers down especially really good for like a and almost the same thing. I throw it almost the same places I throw like the swim jig. I throw it more on like the points, the cuts, that kind of like the isolated. So I don't, I mean, I don't fan cast a wacky rig unless I know there's like, uh, unless I'm, unless I'm like on a flat where I know there's like a lot of beds on or where there's gotcha. bluegill like beds, spawning fish. I can just let it sink down. Uh, depending how deep I'm fishing uh, or what the fish want, I'll typically go like a, a one aught like a any of your like nico style hooks will work I've, i mean i've used the the more like the technical wacky hooks like the they look more like a circle hook but mm -hmm. i tend to actually i tend to land more fish on the straight shank stuff or the longer shank stuff but if i'm fishing a little deeper i'll throw like a like a 1 16th ounce with the weed guard now if we can back up just one second for anybody who's not familiar with the wacky rig can you give an yeah. explanation because I'm, I'm sure there's plenty of people who've never fished it and up oh, yeah. until not long ago, I had never even heard of it. So yeah, uh, it's worth mentioning. I gotcha. Uh, wacky rig, uh, thing like Texas rig, you'll you'll run it like you run the hook through the head, run it down, put it back through the body. It's all streamlined, straight, and everything. Wacky rig, it, it's called a wacky rig. You you it looks like you hook you're hooking in a really funky place. You basically think of like a, a, a typical Senko, five six inch Senko, and it's got that. That's got that, that little short uh, egg sac uh, mm -hmm. section in the middle. You'll literally take a hook and you'll just you'll run it straight through, and then uh, the hooks uh, say the bait uh, bait's running uh, hook uh, bait's running up and down. The hooks pointing like straight vertical. It it look it looks wonky, but like if you you grab the hook and you just shake it a little bit, it just it just does the action. It Think of like a, I think like a caterpillar falling in the water. How it kind of it falls down, the, the the ends kind of retract to each other, retract to each other. It just looks like oh, something fell in the water. It's it's basically it's about to get get. <laughs> no, it, it gets some good action for sure. Oh yeah, it's uh, and you can use uh, I mean I've used like three four inch plastic. Uh, the straight straight the straight tail like a, a Senko style bait is like the mother of all wacky rigs. But I've used, I mean I mean I've even used like the Ten and a half inch worms, which I I think I caught one hundred and fifteen and one hundred fifteen and three quarter in August. Uh, I think back in twenty eighteen on that. But wow. uh, wow. I think I did twenty three and a half, a twenty three and a quarter, and then three twenty threes on all all in like that wacky rigged old monster. But I mean, I was catching a lot of like a uh, fifteen sixteen inches on a standard Senko, and uh, a lot of these was uh, night fishing too. I mean. Gotcha. Just because it's night fishing, you doesn't mean you can't throw your finesse stuff. But uh, it was around uh, old like weed beds, pretty decently clear water. Night fishing, I I, I usually only have good luck on semi clean water. If it's like chocolate milk, I typically don't do well night fishing. But you can throw it on a spin and tackle, bait cast and tackle. Mm -hmm. I use like a six ten like medium action spin and rod. I mean. Uh, if you use like a like a medium light or something like that, it's you almost don't you almost don't have enough back, especially if you're fishing around cover. You don't you just don't have enough backbone. Especially like they'll they'll load up and they'll just, they'll just take you in the mat and you just you're just trying to horse them out, but you're just not going to sure. get more on them. No, then, like, yeah, but uh, probably the heaviest I'd say like a me if you're throwing like a really like like some if you're throwing like a magnum size of this one maybe like a medium heavy uh, bait casting rod or spinning rod we. If, you, if you're using like a heavy action that tips not gonna you're not gonna have enough stuff to really load up on them and then as soon as they come up and jump it's just and as soon as they come up and jump it's just gonna twang there they go sure same thing like when they're using like those uh super heavy like flutter spoons as soon as they hook them they'll they'll reel them straight in because as soon as they get them at, get any leverage on that kind of stuff they'll just spit it but It'll, uh, the heavy action or anything anything stiffer than that will just the tip will unload too that tip will unload too quickly on the on the blank and it just they'll spit it. No, that's good info for sure. No, that's good. Yeah, and then uh, I on my spending setup I just I use braid to leader uh, or braid to fluorocarbon leader. I've seen people use mono straight braid straight fluorocarbon. You can pretty much use whatever the. Uh, 
I mean, I mean, even like like uh, people who use straight braid, all braid floats. Well, the, the worm's heavier than the, the line is, so it's gonna sink unless you're using like a a last tech and a super lightweight hook. And then it might actually suspend and not going anywhere. So um, it just uh, depends on the water because I've I've heard people catch them all different varieties. So it's whatever they get the most confidence in. No, that, that's that's good info, man, for sure. No, there's there's so much here. <laughs> I feel like you gave so much awesome it was pretty it was technical but a lot of times fishing needs to be you know like you kind of have to break it down to its nuts and bolts to really to really understand how it needs to be fished and to use it well so i feel like we have to have to do everybody listen in a service and kind of cut this off because there's so much here that i think i might have to listen to it twice to get all your recommendations so that (laughs) that was good yeah this is this has been really awesome man yeah um kyle before we cut off for the night obviously you know, I found you in some of the groups that we're in together. Um, is there anywhere that people can find you online, learn a little bit about you? Oh, uh, like, a, like you can probably find me on Facebook, uh, just Kyle, uh, look up Kyle Schrader. Or you go to any of like the kayak, kayak fishing groups, I'm probably in like a, the one I frequent the most is uh, Kayak Bass Fishing. I think it's got about 40K members. I'm in like yeah, the, yep. the Central Texas, Dallas, Fort Worth, because I, I fish the trails and about everyone. The only one I haven't fished a fish an actual like in-person event is west texas but that's some that's that that stuff's way far away from me like gotcha. the closest yeah west texas like is three hours plus sure and, and that, that's even me I, i've scooted an hour more west uh last december and it's still the closest is three hours but wow um youtube uh i think it's uh central texas kayak bass and that's all underscore um instagram nice. instagram same thing but uh, try, I try to put about uh, at least one video a week. I'm trying to uh, bump it up to two videos a week uh, at, as I get time to. It's been these last few weeks have been crazy. I've been getting my license renewed. I had to go drive 40 minutes to go get my fingerprinting done because all the sites are closed because of COVID. And that was a pain. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's a fight. Everything's a fight lately. I don't know oh, why. Yeah. Like to be reg- uh, now I got to go get my registration done because most of it, I have to go some. I find somewhere that has it open because a lot of places are closed. <sighs> inspection was easy enough to do them I and like oil oil and gas uh, oil oil change places will still do it <laughs> oh yeah 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 that was easy enough to find well no awesome thank you again for jumping on with us here this is going to be really good um yeah. like i said there's between the uh swim baits and then learn about the wacky rigs i'm sure a lot of people who who you know might not be avid bass freshmen have never heard of the wacky rig so i think that'll be a good one mm-hmm. so No, well, awesome, man. Well, thank you again for coming on with us tonight, and uh, I think we'll cut it off here. Okay, Uh, no problem. I appreciate uh, you bringing me on. Definitely. Awesome, man. Awesome. And where can they they find this at? Just uh, Spotify? Yeah, yeah. So this is this will be available on Spotify, YouTube, iTunes, pretty much every major podcast. Uh, it'll be on Facebook. I mean, so we'll go on. It'll go live on every pretty much every major platform. That'll work. Cool, man. All right. Thanks for having me on. Oh, awesome, man. Hey, thanks so much. Yep. Take it easy. Thanks, buddy.